welcome to today's virtual lecture for Enterprise Imaging for Cardiology. I'm your host, Stephanie Bazinet, joined by my colleague, Raf Bilgens. This is a pre-recorded webinar where we invite you to leave questions and comments in the chat and we will follow up. This is a series of virtual lectures and we invite you to review the others regarding our Enterprise Imaging 8.2 release, where we cover shared workflow, Ruby for AI, and molecular imaging. My role here at ACPA is the Cardiology Segment Manager for North America, and I'm joined with my co-host today, Raf Vilgens. Welcome, Raf. Thanks, Stephanie. Uh, my name is Raf Vilgens. I'm the Global Solution Manager for Cardiology. Today, we will um, do a presentation in combination with uh, a live demo to give you a good overview about um, our solution. Enterprise Imaging is a modern, converged, unified enterprise imaging platform. Today, we're specifically focusing on our cardiology CBIS solution regarding a one single workspace, which is vendor agnostic for capturing, storing, displaying, and collaboration of images. Enterprise imaging is a consolidated architecture with the value of being reduced total cost of ownership. Raf, what are your thoughts here? This is a very high benefit or a big benefit um, because it's not only the um, reduction on, on hardware and systems, but also how you maintain and upgrade your system. That's a big benefit, I think, Stephanie. Thank you, Raf. Image enabling your EMR is of huge value for enterprise imaging. It offers enterprise access to images across your health network. Raf, can you share some details regarding integrations that we've done for previous customers? Sure. An integration from an enterprise imaging system with an uh, EMR is very important. I mean, it's very critical even, you know. The access for a physician out of an EMR to all type of images, not only cardiology, will bring a huge value for our customers. Enterprise imaging is based on a rules-based workflow engine. This improves departmental productivity and efficiencies. Built-in escalation rules help avoid oversights in your day-to-day -day activities as well. Enterprise Imaging for Cardiology offers a complete CBIS solution, including structured reporting and post-processing image analysis for all of your basic needs for cardiology, including non-invasive, molecular, CTMR, invasive, and a full ECG management solution. All of this great feature functionality for CBIS Suite is also now web-enabled. Raf, can you provide some additional details on our web client? So the web technology that we use today is streaming technology, very critical for our users because accessibility um, to cardiologists, sonographers, technologists, IT people is very critical to be successful in this domain. With the power of our CBIS solution offering structured reporting and post-processing for advanced measurements, we also have an analytic package that provides the needed queries, not only for your managerial reports, but for your clinical finding reports as well. The power of a unified solution brings imaging accessibility across all modalities and procedures in one system. We'd like to now transition and show you a quick high-level demonstration of our product. You'll notice that I'm logged into what is called our diagnostic desktop. So I'll show you a couple of different things today, but this is where we're gonna start. So our first differentiator from um, this application is our activities overviews that are on the left hand side here. This application is built on a workflow engine. Well, what does that really mean? So traditionally, PAC systems, if you will, have presented information data procedures in a study status organization. And we don't do that in this enterprise imaging system. What we do is we're built on a workflow engine based on tasks. So based on the procedure definitions, types of exams that you're performing, we work with you to create a specific definable workflow. So every time that exam is ordered, it follows a particular uh, reproducible predictive path, if you will. So our activities overviews here on the left can be created based on the customer needs. So you may have multi-facilities, multiple departments. You may want um, different reading lists for different groups of users. The particular list that I'm in today is specific for a cardiology specialty reading list. So you'll notice that within that work list, I've got different buckets that will then display the appropriate study based on that criteria. So if I were 
the physician reading today all my ECGs, then our workflow engine, based on those rules that you put in place for ECGs, would display that particular study in that work list. If I were the physician reading the nuclear studies today, then I would default and jump into that work list. Any one of these work lists you can have based on permissions to either display or not display, depending on what your day-to-day -day activities and responsibilities are. Within our workflow engine, we also have escalation rules. So escalation rules can be automatically applied into the system so that you have something as simple as this study has sat here for too long and has not been read. Maybe it's at the bottom of my work list. I want to automatically advance it to the top of my work list. That's something our workflow engine rules can do more a little complex is maybe I want to take the status of the task and maybe it's a routine but it is sat there and again gone unread I want to update the priority to maybe a stat that would then again bring it to the top of the list and I can have a color code associated with that so maybe a visual representation of an orange or a red to indicate urgent or stat studies that need to be done Additionally, if an escalation has occurred and rules are placed in our system for that, we can send out an email or a text message indication to a subset group of users so that they are aware that that escalation has been, um, a, needs to be addressed and can be dealt with accordingly. Within our activity overviews, we also have what we call our follow-ups. Um, tasks or work lists. Now these are dependent on the individual user preference, but perhaps I want to see the things that I've completed today. Or maybe I want to see the things that are in progress in the department around me. Um, maybe I want to add certain studies to a particular my list that's individual individually for me of things that I find that are interesting or perhaps I want to follow up for um, maybe use as a conference or just mark them so that I can come back to them at any given time. We also have conferencing within our activity overviews here in our workflow engine and individual users or groups or roles of users can subscribe to the conferences that they want to be a part of. So perhaps I want to be a part of um, a echo conference or a vascular conference of some sort or maybe I want to use this to flag particular studies that I want to use for educational purposes in my departmental meetings once a month. So individual users subscribe to the conferences that they want to be a part of and then additional preferences would allow them to be able to place exams or patients in a particular conference work list so that it shows up for when that patient is scheduled to be presented at that particular conference. Additional permissions can apply based on if that user needs to do any readiness on the image area for this particular patient. So maybe you want to do post-processing, annotations, measurements, things like that. Then you can create snapshots so that during the conference you go directly to the snapshot gallery as opposed to having to go through the full study. So let's go ahead and jump into a particular exam here that we perhaps want to talk about our imaging area. So I've loaded into a study here and you can see that my image area displays automatically for me and I have a preference to either display four images at a time such as the quad that I'm in or if I want to set my standard preset to one at a time I certainly can do that. If I do want to start off with a quad and then perhaps I want to just see one image at a time I just simply double click and you'll notice that on the left hand side I've got some additional tools here that pop out for zooming, panning, inversion, rotation, brightness, contrast, things like that. I can also stop my image and then scroll individual frame by frame if I chose to do that and the double click will bring me back to my quad screen view. One of the biggest advantages of our application in our imaging area for cardio studies is the fact that we are a vendor neutral system and we do allow an extension of your ultrasound machine um, for lack of better words. So you'll notice here that you'll have an, a complete measurement suite so that in the event you wanted to modify or take additional measurements that the sonographer didn't perform on the machine itself, you have then the ability to do that here. Now, of course, it's customary for the sonographers to always take measurements intra procedure, and those measurements will come over and populate into what we call as the measurement worksheet. In the event that someone modified or took additional images 
or measurements of those images, then you would have column two completed with that particular measurement. And then you can determine which one of those measurements or an average of those measurements do you want to update the report. So I'll show you a couple of quick measurement options here within our application and then some of the advanced applications such as a bookmark, perhaps that we wanted to do a quick LV analysis. So I'm going to right click on that 3D image and I'm going to jump into the LV analysis package. Now there's some underlying algorithm here, as you can see, um, back to my tracking revisions. It pretty did a pretty good job. This is not the best image, but again, I wanted to choose one that was more realistic. So if you disagreed with the wall detection of any of these um, views, then you have the ability to modify them based on your particular particular um, liking. You'll notice that you've got your um, anatomical display here and if we're ready we can jump right back to the analysis which is where we were. We can adjust the speeds here as well so right now I think it's defaulted to 100 but if we wanted to slow that down a bit we could certainly do that and then you have all of the particular measurements twist, torsion, uh, global longitudinal strain, etc. If you wanted to apply strain here, you certainly have some strain maps that you can apply that gives you some additional measurements here. So you've got your time to peak with your basal, mid, and apical, your peak measurements, and your in systole measurements as well. You have then the ability here to take a secondary capture with this camera icon in the top right hand corner and that'll save this information and all these measurements back to the either the measurement worksheet and or save that image to the end of your study. Closing out of this particular advanced package, we have the ability to save that as a bookmark and to save those measurements. So we'll go ahead and do that and then hit exit. And if I come back to all of my images, you'll see that image that we saved here at the end. Additionally, you have the ability to look at prior studies here. So this is the value of our core single platform. And you'll notice that these that are representative here are ones that met my relevancy rules. So within our workflow engine, you can place relevancy rules to pre-cache or pre-load prior studies that you would need for differential or comparisons. So I'm gonna actually look at my patient record and see that there's a lot more prior studies here that maybe didn't meet my relevancy rules, but that doesn't mean we can't view them. So what I'm going to do is um, advance to, to another hanging protocol just with a, a quick click of an arrow to the right, and this will advance me to the hanging protocol where I want to see my cross modality specialty. And I've already kind of prepped this one up. So what you're looking at here is the current active study indicated with the blue A. And on the clinical sidebar here, that's indicated with this one being blue with that representative A. Okay, I've pulled in a prior study, which is from the orange date of service here from the ECHO from 523. I've also pulled in an, a prior MR, a prior CT, and an X-ray. And those are all representative with the color, and it'll let me know if there's a report available for that as well. So there's a lot of great feature functionality into having one core platform so that you have image accessibility in one location, going back to that total cost of ownership by not having various applications that you have to support, um, train, and integrate to. So one of the other things that I'd like to show in our session today is our web viewer. So you'll notice here that I've just logged in basic browser using Chrome. I've, I'm looking at the same patient we were just looking at, and this is my timeline history of all of the studies that have the ability to be saved and stored into our application. This we can iframe into your EMR, so when your clinicians or physicians are within the patient EMR or record, you also get an iframed view of all all of the studies that they've had done. And if I'm a particular physician and only interested in CTs, then I could do a quick filter on CTs, maybe on ultrasounds, on x-rays, uh, anything that I want to filter to quickly here, I can do that. Otherwise, we can apply particular themes with those filters automatically applied based on the user role. The other area that I want to talk to you today about is our zero workflow client. So what is our zero workflow client? So um, it's taking all the great feature functionality out of our diagnostic desktop that we just covered and 
it's presenting those feature functions for you in a web environment also. So you'll notice that you've got all your great workflow activity overviews here that we've already reviewed in the diagnostic desktop, including our conferencing here as well. So if I were a particular physician and I was, you know, out and about on the floor at home in my office, etc., and I wanted to quickly log into the system via our Zero Workflow client and read my ECGs, then I would jump into my ECG um, work list and select my patient and my ECG DICOM waveforms are presented to me. I've got some additional feature functionality here. So if I wanted to zoom or maybe change the presentation of what I'm looking at from the different waveforms that I've received from that ECG cart, I certainly can do that. You'll notice that on the right hand side, we do get all the measurements that the ECG cart has sent us and also the analysis of that waveform information as well. Here I can again place some additional measurements or do some modifications if I wanted to and I can update the measurements that I would like to perform here. I can also change my speed, I can change the gain, I can do certain things like that, and I can also add in additional findings. So if I wanted to add in left bundle branch block, then I can again continue to drill down on that. If I disagreed with any of the analysis that the cart sent me, I can simply just um, put that to the trash or deselect it. From a comparative perspective, you'll notice in my top right hand corner, there's a quick compare. So this will give me my representation as I have it right now as horizontal with my current study on the top and my prior study on the bottom, giving me quick access to review those. This can also be set up in a vertical presentation if I wanted. Here's where I have the ability to then sign off or perhaps maybe no report is needed for this particular study. This again ties back to our workflow engine rules so that you can complete your work either in a diagnostic workstation or remotely on the web. Okay, I'd like to go back to our work list now and jump into another study so you can again see quickly how we would access uh, imaging from our web portal. So you'll notice here that our imaging is going to load for us again automatically my preference are going to be taken into account for my display of images. Again just like in the desktop we showed earlier a double click is going to give me a single view a double click back to my quad view. Here's where then I have the ability uh, again remotely to do some additional measurements if I chose to. And I have the ability also in my priors to review those prior studies. So if I wanted to quickly review that ANGO as I click on that and then bring in that in particular image, if it were, I think this one is a play, it will play automatically for me. So again, I've got that great cross modality functionality review side by side um, in my web client as well. And if my particular patient had a report, and let's open up another particular study here. Uh, let's see, we'll open, um, this particular study, you'll notice that I have either a full image view or I can split my screen and have imaging on one side and report on the other. Again, if I wanted to close out imaging and have full reporting, then I have the capability to either begin, start, modify, edit, or append a report that was already final, perhaps. So I could go through my workflow of creating a report and then sign off on that report from here. So that's a quick overview of not only our diagnostic client, but our zero client as well. So keep in mind that our our solution for enterprise imaging is a complete CVIS solution. So we not only do we offer reporting and post-processing image analysis for all the procedures that you're doing within your department. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today and we look forward to working and talking with you in the future. We'd like to thank you for joining us today covering cardiology in this virtual lecture. Please feel free to leave comments and questions in the chat and we will follow up. Raf, thank you for joining us today as well. Thank you for joining us.